obviously it, it's been a big talking point in the AFL with Jeremy Finlayson. What did you make of the penalty handed down to, to him? Uh, well, I'm not isn't really in control of um, what what is going on there. I, I not even uh, um, certain of all the all the details of that. I just read what everything else is in the paper. All I can can control is uh, what transpired with me six weeks ago. We uh, made our apology to the players to the. Uh, the St Kilda Footy Club and to the and to the game, um, and you know um, accepted the sanction that was imposed by the by the AFL. So um, yeah, that's all I really can do. We've got nothing really more to add to to that. The, a the AFL has been accused of double standards, effectively, given the discrepancy in those penalties. What do you say to to those critics? Um, well, you're asking the wrong person. Um, it's the AFL that you need to ask in terms of how they set their set their standards and. Uh, and what their sanctions are. All I can do is just um, accept the fact that I made a, made a blue on the day um, and um, did everything I possibly could to, to rectify that in terms of the players themselves and the, and the club and, um, and accept the, the sanctions that have been imposed by the AFL. Have you done the Pride and Sport training already? Or is that something no, but it's coming, it's coming up. And, um, I'm not sure um, when it will be over the, next, uh, over the next month or so, but... Um, as, as you can imagine, especially from the AFL's point of view, um, <laughs> with uh, with the opening round and then gather round and that sort of stuff, you know they've been uh, they've been pretty busy. That doesn't excuse it from the fact that it's been pushed back, really. But um, but it is what it is, and we'll we'll get that done pretty soon. Were you surprised that Jeremy got a much harsher penalty? Um, as I said, you're asking the wrong person, mate. Um, that. Um, all, all anyone in, in any walk of life wants to be done is treated in terms of their particular case and their particular circumstances, and I don't know the circumstances with Jeremy's, and um, and the AFL have seen fit to make judgment, and if um, there's discrepancy or concern with that, then it's better off to direct that to the AFL rather than me. Sonia, um, we'll just off Twitter with some pretty nasty abuse, what do you think of keyboard warriors? Yeah, well... Oh, this is, it's difficult because, you know, it's a communication tool and it's a really, really effective communication tool for, uh, for many, many people when it's, when it's used in the, in the right way. Uh, it's a really effective way. And Sonia has been terrific being able to communicate with so many people using that, using that forum and platform. And, um, but unfortunately, it's got, some, it's got some risk attached to it. And that's that you do open yourself up to some vitriol from time to time. And it's probably a, bit of a, a little bit of a balancing act because there's probably always just a little bit of vitriol for everyone who's on social media. You subject yourself to that and open yourself up to that, but by and large, you make a you make a judgment on balance. It's just like how much good is it doing to how much bad. And in this particular case, I think um, someone's just said this this is just a little bit over the top at the minute. I'm just going to pull myself away from it for a little while, um, just until um, the balance comes good again. So, um, you know, she's been terrific for our footy club, and um, you know, her and her and Jen Watt um, govern and administer the club uh, superbly, and um, you know, probably if there's if there's any any criticism of our footy club is that we're not going too well on the footy field. Um, if you want to direct the uh, the blame or the attention to anyone, uh, direct it right here. <laughs> Don't worry about our administration or our uh, or our chairperson. Um, I'm in charge of our footy program. Um, Toddy Vonnie gives me a fair chop out. So together, you want to want to point the finger, point it at us. But we'll get there. We know where we're at. Uh, we're really strong alignment with our with our board and our players and. Uh, hopefully our supporters can see enough of where we're going, and um, but it's just going to it's just going to take a little bit of time. It's a tough competition. Um, we've been through this before. Um, plenty of other clubs have been through it before too, and uh, we're going to work our way through it. But we'll work we'll work through it together. You speak about directed to you. Do you feel that internally, the weight of expectation that you guys want to start having some better results than you're having at the moment, particularly last weekend? Yeah. Well, listen, as, as we saw last night, you know, Melbourne who. Terrific side, top four side, I think in everyone's view, um, and certainly were before the, for the weekend. I think they were you know, top or second or third on the ladder and playing a Brisbane side on their, on their home deck and they're 50 points down just before three-quarter time. And it's just like, geez, maybe, maybe the Kings didn't go too bad against Brisbane last <laughs> week. So it is a close, tough competition and um, we know where we're at as a footy club. Um, we know we've got a, a hell of a lot of work to do and a, um, a lot of... Um, a lot of decisions we, we need to make and a lot of improvement we need to make in terms of the, the way we go about things but um, we, know the, we know the direction that we're taking 
Um, and unfortunately, we'd all like to get there a hell of a lot quicker, but um, we're just going to work hard, roll the sleeves up and, um, and see how quickly we can get it done. What's the benchmark this weekend against Geelong? Really tough task ahead of you. Yeah, well, there's not too many people that go on down to the category and one uh, one games of footy. You know, they've been terrific down there. They've, they've started this season really well. So, um, but um, you know, it was, it was really interesting last week in the in the game just for uh, for a little bit of education around our decision making for where, where we're at right now. You know, last last week um, we're we're looking at the Brisbane side and saying, well, Lockie Neal was their best player against um, against Collingwood. Um, the rest of their guys, I think they'd say, were below what their best was for Brisbane. That's probably why they lost the game. Um, so it's just like, gee, if, it, if that stays the same this week, all we've got to do is take Lockie Neal out of the game. I wonder if we should put Jai Simkin on him, um, our captain, and take him away from his sort of normal sort of role, and let's let's tag him with Jai. And we gave serious consideration to that. And then it's just like, well, maybe it's really good for George Wardlaw and Tom Powell to actually play on him for, his, for their experience right now. Does it mean that if they could have a win, like break even in that contest, it's just like, wow, big tick. But even just the exposure of those players. So we end up deciding, no, no, we'll give, him, we'll give those young lads an opportunity. And then Lockie comes out and has 14 touches in the first quarter. Um, and it's just like, oh, you peanut, you know, why did you not play Jai on him? Um, yet another decision that we made during the week was with, with Coleman Jones going out injured with an Achilles. Um, we've been training up Charlie Combin all summer to play defence, and now CJ goes down with a uh, with an Achilles injury, and it's just like, wow, that's where Charlie has played most of his footy. We really need that spot to be filled now. Let's just put him there. But we've put him behind the ball for a reason, um, and that one worked for us. He actually played a really good game, um, and little tick. So to answer your question, they're the things, the little wins that we're searching for as a club right now. It might not come in terms of the scoreboard right now, um, but they're the little wins that we're looking for. And even, even, strangely enough, it's even a little win that George Wardlaw plays on Lockie Neal in the first quarter and just realises, geez, he runs hard. Geez, he's strong in the contest. Geez, he tackles well. Geez, he supports his teammates well. And just that exposure to that is still a win for us, even though it didn't help us on the scoreboard in any way whatsoever in that first quarter. But the scoreboard in two years' time, or the scoreboard in four years' time, I think will help us enormously. We saw um, out in the field Tyler Sellers get told he's making his, his debut this week. What, what does he bring to the, to the side? Yeah, well, that's, um, that's exciting because, um, you know, probably at, at both ends of the ground, we're probably a little bit undermanned for tools, you know, especially with Coleman Jones going out and our decision to play Coleman behind the ball instead of in front of it. So, you know, he, he gives us a bit of competitiveness in front of the ball. He likes to fly at the footy. Um, he's, he, he comes through the Scotch program. Um, he, he's perhaps unfortunate, like a lot of these boys, he, he came, uh, his footy in his sort of draft year and that sort of stuff was, coincided with COVID. So um, a lot of these boys haven't lot of, played a lot of a lot of footy in that you know 18 month period around their 18, 19 years of age. And he was one of those guys. And we've been stoked with his progress over the last 18 months at this footy club. So that's been the VFL program for the first, first 12 months of his time here and then um, you know, for um, you know, the last two or three months, he, he got himself onto our list, and now he, you know, we're at round five of his first season in AFL footy, and he gets his opportunity. And so, um, we're really excited with what he can what he can bring. Hopefully, he can jump at the footy and um, provide some contests because uh, you know the Geelong defence is really really strong defence. They're really really strong aerially, so just to have another taller guy down there will be really helpful for us. The Cats have spoken publicly about their interest in, in Taron Thomas. Were you surprised to see you know, so much interest in him given how soon or well, how recently it was? No, nah, not at all. Well, um, Taron and the AFL and um, uh, and his management need to work through whatever protocols he needs to go through to tick all the boxes for him to become available to, to play AFL footy. Um, but it was never uh, it was never in any doubt for me that that was going to be something he'd be able to, uh, able to achieve. Um, and um, yeah, we're, we're excited if he gets that opportunity, whether it's Geelong or any other club. You know, the, um, the, the whole goal of this is to try to give um, all young men and women um, right across the country, if they've got a passion to play our game, um, how can we assist with giving them that opportunity? And if he can uh, do the things necessary to get himself right, to put himself in that space again, then we're delighted he's going to get a chance. Does it seem premature though for, for clubs to be getting an easy year potentially now when he's only a third of the way through his suspension? Um, well, that, I mean, once again, it's a it's a question for for the AFL rather than 
uh, rather than us. So um, best that I don't add anything more to that. Given what the club went through with Taron over the last couple of years, what would your advice be to the Cats or any club that's looking to... Oh, once, once again, um, yeah, we, um, we, we, try, we tried our best to, uh, to make it work here. It didn't work for a whole heap of reasons. And, um, and whatever happens from here is up to Taron and whatever footy club wants to uh, take him on board and give him an opportunity.